Hey there, Scorpio. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to February. Yeah, 2022. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, so if you're new here, hi, my name is Eric. It is wonderful to meet you. Yes. Uh, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Make sure to smash that like button for me as that helps the you helps us here on Divine Conversations with the YouTube algorithm. And as always, leave me a comment in the comment section down below letting me know how this resonates for you and share it with your friends yes i am available for private readings if you would like to get a private reading with me just check the description box below i have a list of some of the readings that i offer plus my email address read through that shoot me an email let me know you'd like a reading and i will get you all set up if you would like some extra content with me throughout the month check us out on patreon patreon.com slash divine conversations the link to that can be found in the description box below as well so just like last month two point two parts two sides to this reading the first half of this reading is going to be speaking directly to a scorpio rising okay and from that point of view we are going to be looking at the astrology here and we practice sidereal astrology here on divine conversations so this is not going to be the same as mainstream actually in terms of comparing sidereal to mainstream astrology if you're a if you're a scorpio rising in mainstream then you're most likely not a scorpio rising in sidereal if you've never seen your chart before please don't hesitate to hit me up, hit me up reach out to me uh, in terms of your sidereal chart i would be very happy to get that to you free of charge of course if you would like a, an interpretation or a reading or anything like that that will be charged for um i do have an option of about a short 15 to 20 minute video um, of me sitting with your chart, looking at the aspects, looking at what's going on there and just channeling information for you, giving you like a general overview or inter introduction to your sidereal chart. $30 for about 15 to 20 minute video, yeah? Of course, I do have longer options, more in-depth options. Email me and I'll get you set up, yes? But if you would like to see your chart, definitely hit me up. I would be very, very happy to, to send that to you free of charge. Whew. Okay, um, I think we're ready to go. Hi, Scorpio. Scorpio rising. First thing I want to say to you, Scorpio, is congratulations making it through January without completely losing your shit. <laughs> um, but I don't think... Okay, so you might have lost your shit in January. It may not have been a big explosion, like maybe I was predicting, you know, in that reading. Um, but there was definitely, there's definitely an infusion of power that came through for us in the month of January. And I feel at this point, Scorpio, at this point for your energy, the title of your reading is maybe being the super villain really isn't so bad. Uh, because I feel like you have been going through a massive shift in your values, in your alignment to with what you hold value in, which everybody has been going through because of the Venus retrograde, right? But for you, Scorpio rising, this hits a little bit differently. Okay, let me just get into the chart here for you. So what you have in front of you is the chart for Scorpio rising for February, the month of February, 2022. Of course, this is the first of February. So this is just, this is just where everything is placed on the first of February. Obviously things are going to move and shift as we go through the, the month. However, you have a shit ton of energy all wrapped up in your second house for, so this month for you, Aries, the real main focus, even though your the energy is kind of split, is, is divvied up. I mean, it's heavily affecting your second house, but there's also some in your third. You've got two in your fourth, one in your fifth, one in your sixth, two in your sixth, if you count the North Node. Uh, and, and all of those points, all of those other parts are very important and are relevant here. But the big change, the big shift for you, Air, not Aries, I'm sorry, I just did their reading, for you, Scorpio, is your second house, your house of values, okay? Um, the house of what it is you hold value on, how it is you make money, that kind of thing. That is shifting and changing for you. But it's more than just 
you know, you used to be going from being like really vapid and superficial to all of a sudden spiritual and like woke as fuck and all that shit. No, that's not what we're talking about here. For you, at least what I'm channeling, what I'm picking up for you, Scorpio, is that this is deeply, 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 deeply personal. And it's also strongly connected to your level of nurturance and how it is you used to nurture yourself how it is you used to allow others to nurture you or what types of nurturance for some of you i don't even want to call it nurturance but will for lack of a better term right the types of the forms of nurturance that you have accepted from other people that's the big thing i'm feeling for you here that's where your massive massive change in values is really coming through the strongest for you scorpio and in some cases, it's making you out to be the villain. As you step into this new power, into this new alignment, in some cases, in terms of some of the people around you, could very well even be your mother. I am picking up strong family energies because of this fourth house focus, well, fourth house kind of activation here, but someone specifically, I hear it's in terms of like your mother. I heard that very specifically, but by you stepping into this new alignment, by you stepping into this new these this new values system, it's causing you to be deemed or labeled as the enemy or the villain in someone else's story. And that's one of the things that I wrote down for you here. Um, you will always be, oh, I only have one page of notes for you. But in terms of some people, you will always be the villain of their story, regardless as to what you do regardless as to even what they do. I mean, it's their story. They're going to tell them how, tell it, tell it how they want to, even though it involves you, right? Well, shit, you have the same power. You could do the exact same thing, Scorpio. Okay. So, uh, some of the notes that I have written down here for you, your values may have gone through a massive, massive realignment. And it feels like you are fully accepting a new value system that is based upon loving and nurturing yourself in better ways. Again, even if this makes you out to be the villain. And that there it is, you're always gonna be the villain in someone else's story. And then here are some other points that I started to write down that started to come through for me. If you're gonna make me out to be the villain here, if you're gonna make me out to be the bad guy, well then shit, I might as well just look the part, shouldn't I? Or I might as well just step into that role since that's what you want to make me out to be just because I love myself. You do have the four of pentacles here. Ooh, all right, I'll get into that in a second. Um, for some of you, if others had trouble reaching you before, mentally, emotionally, whatever, they are really not going to be able to do it now, okay? I have, I have here, did they really expect you to be a helpless peon forever? In asterisks, then I wrote, cue maniacal laugh. Like, there is something about this infusion of power in, form, in the form of, like, in terms of our sense of selves that for you, Scorpio, is really blowing the lid off of things is really allowing you to step up and own your potential, own your power to nurture yourself and love yourself more and better. And you are feeling emboldened to do so. So you remember last month, what I was saying about, um, about like kind of the whole sun Pluto thing was kind of the, the like, and the, the Pluto archetype is like the, the super villain and stuff like that. And, you know, Plutonian energy can make people very power hungry. It's a very powerful planet, a very powerful energy. And then add a Scorpio in there and someone could really run wild with like power and being power hungry. I don't think you're being power hungry. Scorpio, but I, I feel like you are fully accepting the power that is being handed to you by the universe over this time period and now really stepping into that, but really settling into your new foundation, Four of Pentacles, okay? So that's really where some of this was like, 
You know, did they really expect you to be a helpless peon for the rest of eternity? Like, then cue the maniacal laugh. Like, ha 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 Oh, oh, you poor dear. I'm gonna destroy you now. <laughs> the next thing I wrote down was, and I quote, I really didn't want to have to resort to this, but dot, dot, dot. Oh, who am I kidding? Launch the missile. Now, here's the other part of this, Scorpio, that um, I really feel like is driving this power towards loving and nurturing yourself in a better, a new, and a different way. The first thing is Aries. Not, I'm sorry, not Aries. Uranus here, which has been, which over the, which up until about late January, Uranus was moving retrograde through Aries, which is our sense of self, okay? And for you, that's been happening in your sixth house, your house of health and wellness, your house of um, service to others, your house of routines and all that kind of stuff. With that, you have had, well, at, currently at this moment, you have uh, Chiron in your fifth house. Chiron is um, a, a healing energy often associated with Ophiuchus. And toward, at the end of January, Ophi, uh, Mars, which actually we're gonna talk about for you in a, in a second, because Mars is one of your ruling planets. So there's something we wanna talk about there. But um, uh, Mars was moving through Ophiuchus at the end of January. And so there was a lot of healing that was coming through in terms of the Martian side of things, in terms of your masculine energy, your drive, your willing to do things, the way that you go about doing things, handling things, achieving things, whatever. Um, that was all being reshaped. And so that's connected to Chiron here, which Chiron is the ruling, officially the ruling planet. It's not a planet, it's an asteroid, but, but the ruling celestial body of Ophiuchus, that being in your fifth house is helping you to change your your form of self-expression. For some of you, this is kind of pulling some of you out of an inter, inter, introverted state. But then that takes me to the fourth house where you have Jupiter and Neptune, but specifically Neptune. And then that also takes me back to Mars. But I feel like for some of you here, there's definitely an energy of you being pulled out of your of a certain hermit stage or of a certain introverted energy. And you sunk into, it feels like for whomever this is resonating, resonating for, you sunk into a, an introverted energy because it felt safer. Because the environment around you was not conducive to a healthy and nurturingly loving aspect. So you became slightly introverted in order to protect yourself and in order to protect your energy. But that's kind of what's making you step out of that now so powerful and something that might strike fear into the people around you because you are so emboldened, because you are so infused with power and belief and love for yourself, a new understanding of yourself with Uranus moving retrograde through Aries, also translating to, because this is in your sixth house, Scorpio, translating into a new understanding of yourself and then also a new way of caring for yourself. But then we come back to Neptune, which is here in your fourth house, okay? But in the end of January, Neptune and, and Mars squared up. And that was probably a really frightful time for a lot of people, especially for Aries. I feel like Aries is really going through it. You may have also really gone through it, Scorpio, because Mars is one of your ruling planets. You also have Pluto as your other ruling planet. So, so whereas others, we're, we're all kind of feeling this infusion of power with all the conjunctions that are happening <laughs> with Pluto over the first three months of this year, right? You... Scorpio man are probably getting that infusion of power times a billion, or at least it feels like, right? But okay, I digress. Throughout January, from January 1st to January 24th, Mars and Neptune were squared. And I did do a video on that. If you haven't watched that already, check that out because that's gonna help you gain insight into what that square actually truly means. 
on a collective scale. And I talk, I go in depth about it, okay? But for you, this square, Scorpio, happened between Mars, which was in your first house, your house of self, ruled by Aries, where Uranus has been retrograde through Aries, okay? Mars is also one of your ruling planets, okay? But Mars was in your in Ophiuchus, going through a healing process. And the square with Mars and Neptune, Neptune was bringing up, uh, uh, surfacing deep, 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 deep aspects associated with the masculine side, associated with your action, your drive, your willpower, the way that you go about things, the way that you assert yourself, all that kind of stuff, right? For you specifically, Scorpio, with Neptune being in your fourth house here, I feel like this brought up some deep, dark memories of your childhood or of how you may have been abused in times where you really needed to be nurtured. And I don't want to, I don't want to pigeonhole that and say that that is only relevant to like your childhood and your early family life and growing up, you know, from a, a baby to a toddler to a to a to a kid to a preteen to a teenager to a young. Not not necessarily just that. This could have been experiences that you've had as an adult. Okay, but damaging effects the damaging effects of a really unfortunate un unfortunate nurturing situation but with this shift in yourself this shift in our identity and the fact that that's that square between mars and neptune brought these things up for healing now is why, Scorpio, I feel like you're really allowing yourself to step into this power. And if that makes you a villain, then so be it. Because, Scorpio, this is not, and this is not advocating for, you know, literally being some evildoer that goes out there and inflicts all kinds of suffering on anything and everyone just to get their revenge or for whatever stupid egoic reasons they may have. That is not the case here. You are stepping into a greater sense of loving and nurturing yourself. And yes, the people that have been abusing you up until this point are going to demonize you for that. They are going to look at you and say, you see that one over there? I always knew that one was the problem. I told you that one was the problem. And here you are now in your new sense of self saying, yes, honey, I am a big problem for you. You're not, you're not taking that shit anymore. It's done. The world, the world has just come out here and, and, and Scorpio, there may be a huge level of rage involved with this. That's another aspect of this Plutonian energy. Okay. The, 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 the archetype of the supervillain that is, in, that, that Pluto kind of represents those individuals are usually like blinded by rage and pain. But again, I'm, I'm not advocating for going out there and inflicting pain on anyone. I am definitely not advocating on going out there and trying to seek revenge or anything like that. At this point, Scorpio, it's not even about that. It's just about the fact that, that those old circumstances, that old time frame that lack of nurturance or that time period in which you were at the mercy of others because you didn't know how to love and care for yourself in an appropriate way, it's over. And God forbid anybody that stands in your way at this point. Because you, I mean, Scorpio, you are never really the type of energy to be afraid to let your stinger hurt somebody or to like to really like uh give them that good old jab you know what i mean <sighs> less so now especially if they if you have these people that have been abusing you coming at you six ways sideways trying to tell you about yourself man god help them god help them dog and i quite frankly scorpio i have no sympathy for them i don't neither should you 
nor do you, possibly. Let's see what's come out here. You have a number of cards that's just come out. Six of Swords, Four of Swords, Five of Swords. And then the overall energy right now is the Fool. So that's good. Okay, this is you. and This is you taking a leap of faith, moving into the new direction. I mean, look, you have the world here. Overall energy is the very next card that the world cycles you back to, the Fool. All right? Um... But now, what you have here that's come out, this is clarifying the world. So you are actively moving forward here, Scorpio. Six of Swords, all right? You have just got, you have just got to keep a clear mind. Four of Swords. Do not let anybody that may be trying to fight you, may be trying to stop you, may be trying to harm you, may be trying to derail you, do not let any of that malarkey get under your skin remember keep in mind five of swords remember why you left that situation or you're leaving those situations behind to begin with they are lose lose do not even engage scorpio five of swords energy is the type of energy that you just use you, you look at it you see it for what it is as soon as you understand what it is actually about like as soon as you see it for what it is you put your sword down and you walk away you slowly but surely you walk away you back away you do not engage you do not try to trigger anymore you do not try to inflict any more jabs you get your ass out of there because it will tear you down the same way it's tearing down the other people as well. Nobody wins here. That's what you've got to keep in mind. That's what you've got to remind yourself of, especially if you find yourself being triggered by some people, man. And quite frankly, Scorpio, some of them may be actually trying to do it on purpose just to prove their point. Baby, don't give them that ammunition. Do not give them do not give them that opportunity to gloat. Don't. Don't, Scorpio. It's not It's not worth it. Save all that power for yourself. If you really want to get back at them, Scorpio, if you really want to get your revenge, then get your revenge by being exactly what it is you know you are and putting all of your time, your attention, and your energy in, and your effort into creating or building or doing the things that they are trying to stop being the person that they are trying to keep you from being. Because the best form of revenge in these situations is to be successful just by being you. Best way to stick it to them is to fully be yourself. No apologies. Which is why, Scorpio, the feeling here is, well, shit, if I'm going to be, if you're going to make me out to be the villain, then I might as well just go ahead and be it. You have another card here. The Page of Swords in reverse. What I'm hearing with that Scorpio is don't look back. Don't try to see how they're doing. Don't try to check in on them. Don't try and give them any sort of like advice or anything. Don't look back. Do not. Do not. Under any circumstances, Scorpio, do not look back. Why? Because it's not worth your time. At the bottom of the deck, you have the Queen of Pentacles. And now the saw now Janet Jackson's What Have You Done For Me Lately is coming up. The reason why you are you are not to look back, Scorpio, is because I because I feel like the desire to look back and check in and see how they are doing is coming from this loving and this nurturing place. But Scorpio, answer this question for me. What exactly have those individuals done for you? Other than tear you down, other than make you feel worthless, other than take you away from the truth of who you really are and what it is you're really meant to be. Literally Scorpio, what have they done for you that warrants or deserves your participation? Queen of Pentacles. And if, you're, if the answer to that question is absolutely nothing, actually, they've done a lot for me. They did a lot of tearing me down. 
then under no circumstances are you to look back and check on them. Because that battle is not yours to deal with. Okay. Anything else for Scorpio here? Scorpio rising. Ten of swords, Scorpio. Anything else? Okay. All right. Ooh, wow. Scorpio, this is actually really beautiful. This is, and I'm going to actually close out the tarot section of your reading here with this. You have the Ten of Swords, all right? So an ending is in sight. And you're being presented with an opportunity to choose the way that you move forward. How do we move forward from here? What path do we want to take? Which direction do we want to move in? I mean, literally, Scorpio, this is your choice. And I want you to I, what I want you to listen very closely here because what's very important that you understand about this choice and how to move forward, Scorpio, it all depends on what it is you feel. Queen of Cups. And this, as I'm as this message is coming forward, it feels like in your energy, it feels like this is so novel. Like your feelings have been invalidated for so long that the fact that the universe is coming through and making a, an a, making it a point, Scorpio, to say you get to choose by your feeling what it is that feels good to you, it's like I want to cry. No one's actually given me that right before, is what I'm hearing, is what I'm feeling. I literally, I, I really feel like I want to cry right now because your feelings are being honored. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck, Scorpio, is the Ace of Cups. This is the universe handing a cup of love to you saying, hey, we love you. Oh my God, Scorpio. Closing Oracle guidance for you from the Magic of Unicorn Oracle. Yeah, three shuffles here for Scorpio. Closing Oracle Guidance, one. Two. And three. All right, Closing Oracle Guidance from my Scorpio Rising. Oh, there it is. Okay, uh, overall energy for you, Scorpio, is the card number four. Uncord relationships. Look at that. Let go now. Just let go. Forgiveness is freedom. Okay. Now, the other card that came out here, the card that fell on the table, and why I started laughing, is because it's card number 32, which does boil down to a five. Cosmic Ruby, be a peace ambassador. Okay, if I have to. But also, practice cosmic mastery. Plutonian energy. Pluto does kind of represent a level of cosmic mastery. A level of having access to extreme forms and amounts of power because you are masterful enough to wield them. There we get into the power hungry evil geniuses or, or um, uh, super villains or what, what not, whatever. But Scorpio, with that said, still work on being a peace ambassador. However reluctantly you may, oh, fine spirit. Can't I have a little bit of fun with it? I mean, sure, but don't go harming people needlessly. How about that? Let's just make that little deal. Okay, fine, I guess so. I guess you're right. I 
love you. <laughs> I love you so much, Scorpio. All right, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to regroup. And then we're going to get into the big old collective part of this, the non-denominational part of this reading. Yeah? Okay. Stay tuned. Hey, guys. Okay, so welcome to the second half of this reading, yes? <clears throat> if you have skipped the first half, hi. Welcome to February. Welcome to Divine Conversations. So this is going to be the non-denominational side of this reading. So regardless as to whichever form of astrology that you practice, that doesn't matter here, okay? This is a big old energetic pull for the sign of Air, not Aries, I'm sorry, the sign of Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Uh, this is also the part of the reading that is... Um, that will probably, if at all, would most would probably resonate with a cross watcher. Okay. All right, kids, we're going to start with the tarot. Yeah. I'm going to give this five shuffles and we'll just see what messages we have for the Scorpio collective for February of 2022. Yes. Here we go. One. Two. Three, four, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and beyond. Is this four? It is now. <laughs> and this is five for you, Scorpio. Alrighty. For my Scorpio, ah, February of 2022. What's going on for Scorpio this month? The messages do we have for Scorpio? All right, Scorpio. Uh, so you, this month, are moving away from illusion. So the title that I got for Scorpio energy is mainly from the Scorpio rising side, but is um, maybe being the super villain isn't so bad. There is an element of you feeling or being really empowered in a self-nurturance type of way um you stepping into a greater role or a greater form greater form of self-nurturance and because of that that's causing you to be taken away from certain situations you're moving away from certain situations that have been nebulous and or deceptful deceptive excuse me deceitful the moon have been very karmic like um there have been karmic connections between you and and certain individuals maybe certain individuals that you're of your family you came in, i'm hearing you came into this lifetime with these karmic connections that needed to be worked through and you're doing that now six of swords to temperance Okay, you're moving forward from these karmic connections, these toxic connections in, in order to achieve greater balance in your life. You have effectively cycled out of that. You are closing out those cycles here, but that creates certain situations uh, with certain individuals, especially certain individuals that were strongly abusive, like the aggressors here. The extreme narsopath, nar narsopaths, wow. A narsopath apparently is a cross between a narcissist and a sociopath. <laughs> Does that even exist? But the extreme narcissists, the extreme sociopaths, the extreme psych psychotic individuals, those individuals are going to be demonizing you are going to be looking at you like you're a pariah or saying things like, see, I told you they were a problem. 
And there is an energy here, Scorpio, of you standing up, loving yourself so much more in such a new way, in a much stronger and even, quite frankly, a healthier way. Some of you are standing up like, yeah, I'm the villain. You know what? So be it. If you're going to make me into the villain, then I might as well look the part, shouldn't I? That's the way it's going to be. If that's the way it's going to stay, then so what? With that overall energy, Scorpio, you have the King of Swords at the bottom of the deck. It is what it is. Objective thinking. You know what then? Fine. Why should I even argue with you? See, but the reason why you're able to do this now, where maybe you weren't in the past, maybe, maybe this shift is so extreme, not because we have a ton of conjunctions happening with Pluto over January, February, and into March, okay? And Pluto is one of your ruling signs, so this could be really intense for you right now, right? Um, I'm sorry, ruling planets, but not... Not because of that, Scorpio. Like this doesn't, this probably isn't so intense because of that aspect alone. This might be such an intense transformation and such an intense, intense switch for some of you because of the fact that you were the exact opposite of that before. You may have found yourself to be super introverted, okay? Really close off from a lot of the outside world. Um, and that was a protective thing, right? You built this strong protective layer around you. Almost as if you're like some sort of hermit crab or something, right? You built this really strong outer shell that protected you from the outside world that was constantly abusing you, taking advantage of you. But now you've gotten this infusion of power and you feel like you have made such an immense switch that it literally not only not only intimidates people, but scares them, like, like, like frightens them to their bone, to their core. And so because of that, especially those individuals who are extremely abusive and are just nothing but ego personified, they are going to do everything they can to demonize you, to fight you, to create fear and, 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 and condition people around you or around them to fear you. But that's all because they don't want to lose power. The other most transformational part of this Scorpio is that you found your own power. You don't need them and all their little peons. One of the phrases that I channeled for you this month was, what did they expect? Did they really think I was going to be some helpless peon for the rest of eternity? Cue maniacal laugh. The fuck did you expect? I was going to wake up sometime. Very much what I'm getting from you right now, Scorpio. King of Swords. It is what it is. And now what this I'm hearing, you have made your bed. Now lay in it. And don't give me any shit or flack because of it. Because this was not my doing. What else do we have for Scorpio this month? Ooh. Okay, the Five of Swords. Good. I'm actually really glad this came out. Hold on a second. What do we want to say about this Five of Swords? We want to say about this five of swords you know what there is to say about it eric but okay well, did you want to tell me anything yes <laughs> i'm letting you i'm trying to give spirit the ability to like speak and say what it needs to say before i start flapping my lips right <laughs> i'm sorry we're be we're we're being silly with each other. Anyway, so <laughs> the Five of Swords has come out here for you now, Scorpio. And this did come out during Scorpio Rising. So I'm glad this is coming out for you now because even though there is a level of benevolence within you, okay, and it's that benevolence that is driving you to want to change the way that you love and you nurture yourself, okay, it doesn't mean... <laughs> 
<laughs> it doesn't mean that you're extending much of that benevolence to the people around you, which is fine. You really don't have to. But what spirit is really wanting you to remember, was really wanting to remind you of, is not to give in to the lose-lose energies. Not get into the not give in to the combativeness, not give in to the arguments, the ego flares, the ego battles. You know, somebody somebody gets triggered and then starts popping off at the mouth, and then that triggers you, and then you start popping off at the mouth, and the next thing you know, you've got your hands at each other's throats. Nobody wins there, Scorpio. The best thing for you to do right now to assert this power is not to turn around and use this power to get revenge on other people, especially the people that have hurt you in the past. Your best form of revenge is to see this combative, competent, competitive energy. And yes, and yes, Scorpio, it is a competition at this point because you stepped into a greater form of power and that's triggering the other people that have held power over you or have just held power in general and they don't like that. So their egos are going to get triggered and they're going to do whatever it is they, whatever it, they can possibly do to try and hold on to that power. So instead of playing that game with them, Scorpio, Instead, take the power that you have. It may take all of the power within you to do this, but turn around and walk away. Slowly put down the sword, put down the knife, put down the gun, and back away. Don't give them any more energetic ammunition. Now, for some of you, just the fact that you are deciding to leave the, the, the fight is triggering enough. That's fine, Scorpio. Let them dig their own graves. Let them punish their selves, themselves by incruing a whole bunch of karma because their egos are running rampant. You don't need to be involved with that. Instead, well, you don't need to be involved with that, Scorpio, because five of swords to the ten of wands, because that's just gonna, that's just gonna, I mean, you're just gonna get caught in some thicket, honey, some brambles. You're going to be, you know, incruing all kinds of karma on yourself now. Extra karma that you really don't need, right? Five of swords, ten of wands. It's not worth it, Scorpio. Instead, take that power. Take that truth. Overall energy is the king of, I'm sorry, the ace of swords. Underneath the ace of swords is the king of wands. Underneath the king of wands is the sun, Scorpio. Take this power that you have within yourself now and put it towards what it is you want. What it is you want to create for yourself. What it is you want to create for your world. How it is you want to move forward in your life now. Your best form of revenge, Scorpio, is to go out there and live your best fucking life. That is how you get revenge. And I am happy to provide that form of guidance for you. <laughs> because, because that kind of, 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 of guidance, you getting revenge by going out and living your life and living it to the best of your ability is good advice. Why? Because it empowers you and harms no one else. Now, as far as what it is you're doing to live that best life, hands off the wheel there, that's on you, right? But if you're just going out there and using your power to, to, to drive yourself towards what it is you truly want, instead of using your, instead of using this power to get what you want by, by, by stepping on the backs of other people or stabbing other people or intentionally harming other people to get what you want, then you have no negative karma to speak of. You're not hard. You're not hurting anybody. And if somebody is hurt by you doing what it is you do, by you living your best life out here, minding your own goddamn business, well, then that's just an, that they're just butt hurt. Their egos are just bruised, and that ain't got nothing to do with you, right? Mm. Last messages for Scorpio from the tarot here. Anything else that you want to say to Scorpio this month, Spirit? Yeah. 
yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, that's strange. Oh, oh, no, 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 it's not strange. Okay, your overall energy, last message from the tarot here for you, Scorpio, overall energy is the Four of Cups. But, and that's what I was looking at, looking at and was saying, well, that's strange. Why is the Four of Cups here? But it's not strange. Because what's come out here on the table is the Hierophant to start with. And when the Hierophant came out, what I heard was, you have learned your lessons well. I'm kind of feeling, because the, the Hierophant is about society um, and institutions, institutionalized situations, longstanding situations, uh, marriage, uh, commitment. The Hierophant does represent commitment, um, but but it represent if it represents commitment, in my opinion, it represents commitment in a forced and an imposed way. You commit to something because it's generally always done or society just does that or, you know, like you have family pressure, societal pressure, religious pressure, whatnot, whatever. Like the form of commitment that the Hierophant represents doesn't feel like it's all too willing most of the time. Oftentimes it's coerced and imposed upon you. But then also the Hierophant, in my opinion, as a reader, also kind of represents the lessons. It represents teaching and learning, yes. But it, for me specifically, it represents the lessons that we learn here in the third dimension that often feel imposed upon us. Well, I didn't sign up for this. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I promise you, you did. You knew exactly what was going to happen in your lifetime, what you, what it is at least you were about to face when you were incarnating in this lifetime. How exactly that it winds up uh, uh, working out, that's the wild card here. But I can assure you, you definitely did sign up for this. But for you, Scorpio, the Hieron font here represents, I heard, you have learned your lessons well. You are graduating out of this phase, out of this cycle of your life with flying colors like sparks and fireworks and like the whole nine yards, all the fanfare and all, you get all the fanfare, Scorpio, because you learned this lesson quite well. You've healed quite a bit, but also because, you, because you're fly, passing with such flying colors, now you really have the opportunity to go after what it is you truly want. And this is why I feel like I'm feeling this energy of you've passed these lessons with flying colors because now you have this clarity, this, this form of clarity and experience under your belt, seven of pentacles, to really open you up to some massively beautiful dreams and a massively beautiful, like the, the, with the star here, Scorpio, the future, the future feels so bright for you. And it's all because of, it all has to do with what it is you learned here. Seven of Pentacles and the Hierophant. Okay. Now, as far as this Four of Cups at the bottom of the deck, reluctance. Good. This is the lesson that you've learned, Scorpio. I don't want to be involved with that situation. Well, why not? Because it's not balanced and reciprocal. Queen of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles. To the Queen of Cups. I have greater emotional boundaries at this time. I am loving and caring and nurturing for myself in a much better way at this point, Queen of Pentacles. And because of that, I have no desire to get involved with your meaningless situations that are not balanced and reciprocal. So that's where the reluctance comes into play. And for you, Scorpio, I want to say congratulations. Because I am hearing now that for some of you, that was the lesson you needed to learn all along. How to empower yourself. There it is. Beautimus. Let's close out this reading for you, Scorpio. From the Oracle of the Seven Energies. Five shuffles here. One. Two. Three. 
three. Closing Oracle Guidance for my Scorpios. Four. And five. All right, Scorpio, what have we got for you? What's your closing Oracle guidance this month? Ha <laughs> ha! I love it. I freaking love it for you, Scorpio. Overall energy is card number four, which in this deck I would say relates to the Ace of Cups. Great and full. You are feeling great. You are connected to the greatness that is you because you finally feel full. You finally are full, full of love, full of light, full of self-respect. Final card here is card number 14, which does boil down to a five. So we're going from a four to a five, but you have beautiful uncaging. This is you breaking free, breaking out of that mental prison, breaking out of that mental and or emotional and or societal conditioning. Taking ownership of your life and of your power and of the greatness of your power. And God damn it, if that makes you the enemy and the villain, then so be it. Because you don't care what others have to say about it, what their opinion is. They don't even know the beginnings of who you truly are. That's fine. They really don't need to know. I'd rather keep it a secret, actually. Good for you. No longer needing that validation, Scorpio. That's, I mean, like, shit, that's the end all be all here, isn't it? Okay. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you would like a personal reading with me, whether that be tarot or astrology or a combination of both, check me out. Uh, all the information can be found in the description box below, including my email address. Send me an email. Let me know you'd like a reading and I will get you all set up. If you would like extra content with me throughout the month, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. And as always, make sure to subscribe if you're new here and smash that like button for me. Uh, 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 leave me a comment in the comment section down below and share with your friends. Yeah. With that said, I hope you have a fantastic month and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of March. Yes. Beauty months. Take care. Bye. <laughs>